Welcome to Climbing Together, the small business experience. I'm Beth Houtrow, founder of Climb the Small Business Book Club. In every episode, I talk to a small business owner about a mistake that they've made and what they learned from the experience. Mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible, so let's embrace the mistake. And today we're so excited to welcome Jessica Eastman Stewart to the podcast. Jessica, tell us a little bit about you and your business. Sure. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Jessica and I help folks get organized and have more fun at work and at home. Uh, that's what I love to do. It is my purpose in life to help more folks find joy and ease. Nice. Awesome. And how do you do that? Like what's the, what's the product offering? Are you doing classes? What, what comes from how you do that? Yeah, I do a lot. I have online courses. So for example, one of my most popular ones is get your email under control. <laughs> and people really like that one to, you know, get their email from, you know, feeling really stressful to something much more calm. Um, and uh, another one example would be a guide to how to have a weekly family meeting to kind of get organized at home with the other folks in your in your home, uh, whoever those might be. And so those are a couple of things. And I also do a lot of retreats and workshops for companies and for teams, you know, to help them do some of those same ideas, um, you know, or do some planning that they need to do or, or work on team culture. Amazing. I love that. I love being organized. It's yeah. <laughs> makes me very happy. So, and I'm me sure too. I don't I agree. I don't know how people survive without being organized. So I'm sure people's lives are much better after they've worked with you um, and really gotten that hammered out. Very I cool. Hope so. All right. But we are here to talk about mistakes. So tell me about a mistake that you made as you were kind of starting out growing your business. Yeah. So in late 2022, I really, I knew I, wa I was doing some live workshops, for example, getting your email under control in an hour. And that was going really well. Um, and, and play, you know, how to plan your week and things like that. So I wanted to do some more, um, live workshops, but black Friday was coming up and I was like, you know, I'm an online business owner. And so I have to do something related to black Friday. I mean, that's just what you do. Right. And so I, came up with some topics for workshops I wanted to do to help people get organized at home, you know, like how to do meal planning and how to, you know, have that weekly family meeting. And, um, and I came up with this workshop series and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do them once a month in the new year. So in January, I'll do one, February, I'll do one, in March, I'll do one. And then for Black Friday, I'll just sell like a discounted package. Like you can get now, go ahead and buy your spots at my workshops you know, in like March, 2023 here in mid November, 2022. And I was so excited and I was confident we were just going to sell like 50 or a hundred of these. Like everybody would want to get a great deal on these workshops in five months from now. And you know, it sounds ridiculous saying it now, but shockingly, that was not that popular to go ahead and sign up for a March workshop in November of 2022. So, you know, um, that I learned some things about what makes a great offer and how much people want to plan in advance. Nice. And what, so what have you done to adjust? Like, what have you done from that learning? Yeah, I've learned that, you know, folks do need to plan ahead, you know, and if you're, if you're launching something, you do need a little bit of a runway before people are, you know, going to be able to buy that. So you can't be like, you know, hey, come to this workshop tomorrow. It's the first time I'm telling anybody about it. So I know that, but I also know now that it can't be too far in advance. Folks need to, you know, know that something is coming soon before they're willing to invest in it or that it's available immediately, you know, if they want to buy it today and it's, you know, a course or something like that. So I've learned that, you know, going too big too soon, right? Because it was also like a multi live workshop offer. You know, it was like, you know, it wasn't a cheap thing. It was like, you know, in the three figures and folks needed to really invest. And, you know, that was after having really only ever had one $10 offer that I was really selling and made in some occasional live workshop. So it was a big jump for folks in my audience. And so um, I think now I've got a much more you know, I've got a suite of offers that people can buy, you know, and they're at different price points. And I do still need to build some more like high level offers and medium level offers, but I've got a number of things that folks can access at different points. And so I'm to the point where most days somebody is buying something from me, you know, that is helping them at the right point where they're at. Um, and it isn't this like 
you know, huge commitment. Um, so I'm hopeful that, you know, next time I have, you know, I don't know if I'll do a Black Friday offer this year, but I have a feeling that, you know, both with a bigger audience that I've grown over the last year and my learnings from last year, um, that I should probably not be selling a March 2024 offer this November, <laughs> uh, that hopefully it'll be, you know, much more successful this time around. Nice. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's very smart to be able to have um, like a introductory access point that people can f- discover what you're doing and you know who you are before you push them into some sort of like you said like big ticket item um, that right. maybe they don't right. even know going- you or maybe they know you a little bit but they're not yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> going from like big ticket. freebie yeah. sign up to like spending a hundred and fifty dollars is like some people do it but most people don't so I needed to like build that a little bit more thoughtfully. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that is great advice. Um, but so we're brought, this podcast is brought to us by Climb the Small Business Book Club. And so we always talk about our two tenets, which are continual learning and community. And so learning, obviously we're a book club. We love books. So tell us about a book that's been important to you. Yeah. Whenever people ask me the most, the best like professional book, I always say Getting Things Done by David Allen. Um, it is, I think, the core of when I was, I I read it as a young person, I've read it a couple times since then. If folks want to get organized, I think this is the most important book you could read because it talks about the big picture, about why you can't keep things in your head and some big picture principles about how to keep them organized. And it's not like a specific system. You know, it's like whether you organize yourself on paper or digitally or a combination of both, this is the kind of system that you can apply the ideas to any way you're getting organized or any tool you're using. Um, I think it's really foundational. Um, So I think that is the number one one. I I usually, when I've hired folks in the past, if they haven't read that book, I almost always buy it for any new hire on my team because I think it is such a key set of ideas. And you know, from folks who are like, who would identify as like hot mess express all the way to folks who are like pretty organized already. Like, I think all of us will benefit from it and move forward on our own particular organization journey. So it's a, it's a really important book. I I love it. That's awesome. And I I love hot mess express. So I'm going to have to start. (laughs) 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 My mom's email has like, 12,000 unopened emails in it. I'm like, yeah, this is a hot mess express. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she might need to go through that Gmail course. Um, the, uh, but I mean, you should tell her that people have come to my workshop with over a hundred thousand like emails in their inbox. So, you know, she's not alone. She's not alone. She's not- and they, they, those folks have left with like a hundred. So like, you know, wow. we can, you can okay. get a lot done in an hour if you know the right steps. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, maybe that's her Christmas present. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's my Black Friday offer. (laughs) Get organized before the new year. I love it. I love it. (laughs) That's right. Well, there you go. Or yeah, get ready. Yeah. Organize for the new year or start the new year off right. Right. That's uh, those are some good pictures there. Okay. So our last question is about community. So how have you built a community of entrepreneurs around you to help support you as you grow your business? Yeah, I think joining some online communities has been really worth it. Um, There was a women's business community called Origin that I was part of. It's no longer in existence, but I met some, you know, business folks that I'm still connected with and that I've partnered with and found ways to collaborate with over time there. Um, There's um, an online business teacher who I really appreciate, Lizzie Goddard. Um, She does a lot of teaching about running online businesses and she has created kind of a, you know, like a client student Facebook group that I find to be one of the better places on the internet um, for business owners. And so I really enjoy being there um, and getting good advice. I've learned a lot. And then, you know, I've been, I've started at this point, I've been to a couple conferences and that has been amazing. Those in-person connections are hard to beat, you know? And so for example, I went to a conference mom 2.0 earlier this year. um, And it's for folks who are kind of working with moms and parents in general. And, you know, I've collaborated with a whole number of people that I met there um, in different ways. And it's been really lovely. And I feel like they're like real life friends instead of just online friends. And so um, I think getting to in-person places where other entrepreneurs are is really valuable. So um, online and in-person places, I think are the way to, 
and make connections. Nice. And I'm really um, interested in how small business owners are collaborating and partnering with each other. So what are, would you be willing to share what some of the collaborations are that you've had with these people you've met? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I've done a number of them. So a couple things. Um, for folks with email lists, we've done freebie swaps where like I pick a freebie that they've got that I think my audience would really like. And I tell my audience about it and then they tell their audience about one that I've got. And so, you know, if there's overlap, we're finding folks on each other's audiences. That's been great. Um, I love being on podcasts. So I've been on podcasts with other folks, which is great. Um, like this one, um, I have done affiliate situations where, you know, I set them up to share about an offer and, you know, share some of the revenue of some of their people buy it or same, you know, like one of my um, business besties, uh, she does amazing stuff talking about kids and food. And so we're going to collaborate this fall. She's doing a workshop about sugar as we head into like sugar season. Um, and so <laughs> we have, you know, like I'll tell my audience about that. Um, and we have like an affiliate thing and she's done the same for some of my resources. So that's been really great. Um, and, you know, just, uh, what I haven't done yet is um, like create products together, but I feel like that's mm -hmm. with some folks, nice. you know, I've been thinking about how could I, you know, bring people together to talk about a topic and create like a, you know, summit of like five audio conversations or something that are all about a topic, but coming at it from different lenses. And, you know, I think that could be really fun. So I anticipate that if I do yeah. that, it'll be with people that I've met in these online and in-person communities. So really excited for what's coming as well. That's, that's awesome. That is exactly what I think our listeners need to hear about is that you need to be able to collaborate and work together and share each other's audiences with other people you trust and value and they trust and value you. And so thanks for sharing all those partnerships. But Jessica, that's our podcast today. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Climb the Small Business Book Club, where entrepreneurs go to learn, discuss, apply, and grow. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe at Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts or follow us on Instagram at Climb Book Club. And always remember, mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible. So let's embrace the mistake.